Special reports, the number of hospital admissions after people deliberately poisoned themselves has risen by almost 50% in a decade. We've seen NHS figures at Newsbeat which show there were more than 114,000 admissions in England, Wales and Northern Ireland during 2011 as compared to almost 79,000 10 years earlier. The British Red Cross says it's worried many young people don't know how to help a friend who may self-harm in this way. Newsbeat's Anthony Baxter has the story. <laughs> Amy's lived in Showbridge all her life. She shares her flat with Bob and Betty, her cats. I used to follow Cambridge Town Football Club, but then they kind of got relegated. So you were a fair weather fan? <laughs> um, this is the garden area to our flat. Um, it's really lovely to come up there to come out in the sun because you get stuck inside. In the when she was 21, Amy started to deliberately poison herself. My first time was a suicide attempt. I really wanted to die, but after that I started taking um, overdoses as a form of self-harm. I would come home from work on a Friday evening and take an overdose, call myself an ambulance, spend the weekend in the hospital until the Sunday evening, and then I'd go back to work again the following Monday morning. I think a lot of people listening may find it very difficult to differentiate between a suicide attempt and a form of self-harm, which is self-poisoning. Well, for me, um, every suicide attempt has been where I take my medication all in one go. But when it's been self-harm, I've always called an ambulance for myself or, or gone to the hospital by myself. Amy says she would also take different tablets when self-poisoning and that the treatment she would get in hospital to counteract the overdose would become part of the cycle. It makes you very, very sick. And I, that's what I became addicted to, the, the punishment of being so sick. I would be vomiting so much that I'd be in absolute agony, I'd be vomiting blood. Um, sorry. NHS figures seen by Newsbeat show there's been a steady rise in hospital admissions for self-poisoning, from almost 79,000 in 2001 to more than 114,000 in 2011 for England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Statistics for Scotland aren't available. Several charities, including the British Red Cross, say they're concerned. Hospital admissions are going up all the time. And self-poisoning is one of the biggest issues when it comes to self-harm. Paul Donnelly is from the British Red Cross. The organisation has today started a UK-wide awareness campaign for self-poisoning. We feel that it's important to raise this as an issue and give young people the first aid skills to be able to deal with it in the future. This is SAFE, a voluntary action group made up of teenagers from Tunbridge Wells in Kent. They work with other young people to raise awareness of mental health problems. Some here say there is a problem with deliberate poisoning. It's sad to think that I'm only 17 and I already know four people who have self-poisoned and have been admitted to hospital because of it. Well, I think part of the reason for self-poisoning specifically is that it's not visible. And you could argue that there's less stigma surrounding it because it is less visible. But doctors say the internal damage caused by self-poisoning can be severe, leading to organ failure and in some cases death. Amy says it's now been 18 months since she harmed herself in this way. My dad came to see me in the hospital and um, he broke down and cried. And um, I think that's when I realised that I wasn't just hurting myself, I was hurting people around me. I never want to go through that pain again and I never want to put my family through that again. <laughs> Anthony is here now, and uh, you've spoken to mental health charities about this. Uh, yes, uh, Young Minds say May is a peak time for calls to their helpline about self-harm, and that they think exam stress could be a trigger. If you want more help uh, or advice, there are a number of links on the Newsbeat website. There's also a video with the British Red Cross and some basic first aid tips. And this has been one of the main talking points on Newsbeat's Facebook page. It has quite a few... And some basic first aid tips. And this has been one of the main talking points on Newsbeat's Facebook page. It has quite a few people like... Jessica raising concerns about the stigma attached to mental health problems. The other side of the debate, how much help there is. Alexandra says mental health facilities are not big enough to cope with mental health needs. Thanks a lot. This is Newsbeat. A man accused of murdering...